Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the November 5th, 2014 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order. Before I proceed with our agenda, I want to recognize uh, any members. I know we have at least one member of the current class of leadership, Rutherford, here. Mr. Mike Goodelow is in the back of the room. Mike, stand up if you would. We want to see you. Anybody else uh, in leadership, Rutherford, here? Right here. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. And I know you want to stay for every minute of the meeting, so we appreciate you being here. <laughs> we'll move right on to approve the minutes of the September 17th, 2014, and the October 1st, 2014 Planning Commission meeting minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, I'll declare them approved as submitted. We have one item on the consent agenda this evening. That's a mandatory referral for the extension of a lease agreement to Univar USA of property located at 912-L Street, Univar in the city of Murfreesboro is the applicant. Is there anybody on the planning commission, anybody uh, on the staff or any member of the audience tonight would like this item removed from the consent agenda for further discussion? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Hearing none, approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. We'll move on into the public hearing portion of our agenda. We have seven public hearings scheduled for this evening, the first of which is a zoning application for approximately 7.42 acres to be rezoned from Commercial Highway to RM16 south of Indian Park Drive along Merchant Walk. Mr. Robert Trent is the applicant. Good evening, Ms. Green. Thank you, sir. Um, our first public hearing this evening is for you to consider a zoning change request that's been made by Mr. Robert Trent. It is for the property that's identified in orange on the map that's on the screen um, on the TV, and also you should have this in your iPads as well. This property is shaded orange, and it's currently zoned CH, and that's Commercial Highway District. It's located along the western side of South Church Street or 231, and along, you can see, it's along um, Merchant Walk. The property is currently zoned CH, Commercial Highway District, and it was zoned such when it was annexed um, in 1988 and 1989, and it's remained zoned CH since that time. The properties to, along between this property and South Church Street are also zoned CH, Commercial Highway District. Many of them are currently developed. There's a Zaxby's restaurant on one of these lots. There's um, also some other fast food restaurants and a gas station. Along Merchant's Walk are various types of offices that have been constructed and in a few vacant parcels. The property is bordered on the north and east by other properties in the perimeter place south subdivision that are zoned CH. The property to the south is zoned RD, and that's residential duplex, and it is developed with some duplex, duplex structures, which are two-family dwellings, and it includes the land in the Creekwood subdivision. The property to the west is zoned RM12, and that's multifamily residential district, and it's developed with a townhouse development called the Cottages of Indian Park. The property to the north across Indian Park Drive is zoned PUD, Planned Unit District, and you can see that on the north side of Indian Park Drive, and it's developed with Summer Lake Apartment Complex. The, the property um, applicant has a contract to purchase the property, and they want to, de to develop it with multifamily apartments. The CH zone does not allow residential uses and does not allow multifamily residential uses. With the property being about 7.4 acres, you could get a density of 16 dwelling units per acre, which would total approximately 119 dwelling units, which would be the maximum that would be permitted. There is the opportunity to, for them to have a few more dwelling units if they get some density bonuses. Our zoning ordinance allows a couple, a few extra units based on amenities that are provided, which could be basketball courts or pools or tot lots, so long as they meet some minimum standards. So it could be a few more units than 119, but the 119 gives you a good number. They could, of course, opt to not develop that many, um, but I think we'd just like to know what is the most that's possible. This property is somewhat odd-shaped. You can see from the orange shape on the map that there is an appendage that does reach to Indian Park Drive. This property is also affected by the 100-year flood zone or floodplain of the Stones River. And then when the staff comments were provided to you, we didn't yet have an answer from the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department regarding sewer service to this property. We've since have gotten a memo from Valerie Smith, who's with the Water and Sewer Department, the Engineering Department, who stated that she believes that they could provide sewer service to this property. Um, the applicants or representatives are in the audience if you have any questions from them. 
you should conduct a public hearing prior to um, considering this matter and then making your recommendation to City Council. Staff will be glad to answer any questions that you may have regarding this request. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Green? Does the applicant have any comments they'd like to make before we'd open the public hearing? Good evening. <clears throat> she covered most of it. Um, I'm not here to take issue with the current zoning. Uh, this development got activity in 06 and 07. Wilson Bank went in Pinnacle 11 and 12. It kind of finished there on the road. It was Zaxby's and some others. Uh, there, she mentioned there are three vacant lots besides this one up Merchant Swamp. Uh, the bank took the property back in 11. Uh, there is a, uh, an appraisal that was given to me by the bank that stated um, in the appraisal that in the last year and a half, and it was dated the end of 13, there have been no offers, no interest in this property. Uh, sometimes developments, infill developments, you know, they kind of down the vine. And it looks like this being more of a destination uh, parcel at this point because although that's, that zoning, commercial zoning is for linear highway use, this site's not going to have access from the road to be seen. So it ends up being a destination office building site, and it doesn't look like there's been any interest. The bank has uh, interest in trying to rezone it. I have interest in trying to acquire it and get it rezoned for multifamily. Um, certainly, there's not going to be 116 units. There's probably four, four and a half acres of buildable land. The flood zone covers that whole skinny strip all the way up through there. Um, We think since we're bounded by uh, the west side with RM12, a PUD and RM16, we really are butting up against a residential area. We're not taking a commercial piece and dropping it in a residential area. So it just seems to be a compliment to add to it, knowing the situation of the, sit of the asset to date and where there's just been no interest and there's been no pursuit of development of any kind in that area at Merchant Swamp from what's What's been vacant and been vacant for a long time. So I'm requesting the consideration uh, to resign it. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Trent? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Before I open the public hearing, I'll briefly go over the rules we conduct our public hearings by, in case you're not familiar with them. When we open the public hearing, you'll be invited to come to the podium if you wish to speak either for or against the proposal. Please state your name and give your address. Keep your comments no more than three minutes if possible. Make all your comments and questions to the Planning Commission. If you do have questions, the staff will make note of them. We'll try to answer your questions at the conclusion of the public hearing. All that being said, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Anybody at all? In that case, I'll close the public hearing. <clears throat> Questions? Yes, sir. Another one. Ms. Green, how many realistically units do you think will be able to put on here? It'd be hard to um, to tell without having something prepared by an engineer. I there are areas that can't be developed. However, um, the density would allow that number of units. So even though there's area that's in the flood plain, they can include that in their amount of units that they could have. So although they may not be able to locate it in a certain area, they may be able to concentrate some units in other areas to reach that density. So it's hard for me to determine what um, they would have. The, the applicant submitted a concept plan, which is just that. It's just a concept of what they want to do. And I'm trying to recall the number of units they showed. It was, it was um, less than the 119. But it, it's really schematic, and, and I haven't even reviewed it for any sort of accuracy to see if they've met our other standards. Could you tell me what school zone this is in? Uh, no, I cannot. I mean, I, I can, but not right now. I could uh, probably look it up. 75 units. What's our ratio on the units per student? <coughs> Four to one, five to one. No, sir, it, it would be, let's see, I, I've done, forgot my number, but uh, we're looking at about 0.8 children per dwelling unit for this uh, for standard multifamily. 
The uh, number of children per unit may be dependent upon the type of housing. A more affordable type of housing uh, may have more children per to one unit. A more upper end that's oriented to seniors may have a lower yes. number. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to tell at this point. And going from commercial highway to RM16 would be a down zone? Generally, we would uh, consider that to be a down zone. Okay. All right, thank you. So it's roughly about three acres that's really not usable of this parcel due to flood zone consideration. Any other questions? <coughs> If there's no other questions, we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion we approve, subject to any staff comments. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you for coming, Mr. Trent. Okay. Item B, the zoning application for approximately 6.8 acres to be rezoned from RS-15 to PRD at 728 West Thompson Lane. Mr. Gary Wisniewski for Landmark Homes is the applicant. Chairman Mr. Lamb, before we get started on that, I want to let you, to remind you that uh, that is land that I own, that I have under contract to sell. So I'm gonna leave the room when the public hearing's over. If someone would be so kind as to come get me, I'll be loitering in the hall. <laughs> Don't uh, wander off too far, Mr. Adler. We might need you. Ms. Green. Thank you. With that being said, I will handle this application have been so far. This is for property that is owned, as mentioned, by Mr. Adelot, the planning director. So he has removed himself from any of the review or the consideration of the matter and hasn't been involved in any of the discussion of this application. It's something that um, myself and other members of the staff, our transportation staff, engineering staff, and um, have been reviewing this application. It is for property that's approximately seven or 6.8 acres, and it's located north of West Thompson Lane, and you can see on the map before you, it's the parcel that's a purple rectangle. The property is currently zoned RS-15 in that single-family residential district. It was zoned RS-15 simultaneous with this annexation. This property was annexed in two parts, although it's always it's been one parcel. Um, the, the portion closest to West Thompson Lane was annexed in 1986, and then the remaining property in 1987. When property is annexed in the city of Murfreesboro and there's no companion zoning change request and it's zoned for um, residential or agricultural purposes in the county, it comes into the city with a default zoning of RS-15. So since 1986-1987, this property has been zoned RS-15 in the city of Murfreesboro. The property, um, the RS-15 zone would allow single-family dwellings with a um, minimum lot size of 15,000 square feet lots to be developed on the property. The property as it currently sits is improved with a single-family house and it has several accessory structures. The parcel to the north is also zoned RS-15, however it is the location of a landscape business. And I've got an ortho photo that can maybe help you see that a little bit more clearly. The um, property to the west is also zoned RS-15, however it's the location of the Bible Pathways Ministry, which is an institutional group assembly. I don't believe it's a church, but it is a um, considered an institutional group assembly like a church would be considered. The property located east of Leanna Road are zoned PCD, that's Planned Commercial District, and that is to allow the Exchange Club Family Centers. And then if you look at the property, you can see there's a um, portion of property at the intersection of Leanna Road and uh, West Thompson Lane that is zoned RMO and that's mobile home district and of course that would allow a mobile home park which is currently situated on the property. Properties to the east of the subject area are, are also zoned RS-15 and they are developed with large single family lots and then there's a small mobile home park just a couple lots to the east. The Windsor Green single family subdivision is located across West Thompson Lane and it's also zoned RS-15 and it backs up to Hooper's Bottom which is a, a feature I believe we're all familiar with here in Murfreesboro. The proposed change is for you to consider changing the zone of this property from RS-15, Single Family Residential District, to PRD, Planned Residential District. You had couriered to you a program book that shows the specific plan for this property, and it's also included in the digital copy of the agenda, which was available for download. And that packet would become the zoning for the property and would describe what is allowed. The proposed PRD, which is being called Tuscany, would allow the construction of a maximum of 34 single-family detached homes on the 6.8 acres, and that gives you a density of about five dwelling units per acre. And just to compare that to the existing zone, the existing zone would allow 2.9 dwelling units per acre. 
what is a little different from a traditional single family lot. These are single family detached houses, but they will be um, the form of ownership is when you buy this house, you'll, you'll own what is um, inside your house, and all the rest of the area will be common area. So it won't be a traditional lot that's divided into 15,000 square feet, and you just own what's in there. There will be common elements such as a pool and house, and there'll be some on street parking and um, private streets. So this won't be a public street. You'll see that the street is also proposed to have a gate, and they've provided a turnaround for that gate. Um, each home will have a driveway that will fit at least two cars and will have two car garage with, that will be a carriage style garage. Also, the homes will be a minimum of 1,800 square feet and consist entirely of a masonry exterior. So that needs, if it's masonry, it will be brick, stone, or hardy plank. Those are all masonry products. Um, I'm going to invite Mr. Matt Taylor to the lectern. He's got a, a PowerPoint presentation to go through the details of this plan. I did want to point out that West Thompson Lane is currently identified on the major thoroughfare plan to be improved to a five-lane street section with curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and bike lanes. And I know we've heard from the community about their concerns with Thompson Lane. They really would like to see that improved. It is a state highway, so that is under TDOT's jurisdiction. And we certainly know that it will be improved, but when is still, um, I think, maybe up in the air, I would say five or ten years. We did ask them to look at those plans and make sure that they dedicate any necessary right-of-way to uh, accommodate those future improvements so the city wouldn't have to buy that right-of-way. We also asked them to do a traffic study, and I'll ask Mr. Taylor to speak a little bit more about that study. In addition to that, we um, recommended the applicants hold a neighborhood meeting, and they were glad to. So on October 23rd, um, there was a neighborhood meeting, which I attended, and other members of the planning staff and transportation staff attended at the Siegel Elementary School. And I would say that that was a well-attended meeting, and there were several comments and questions there. And, and if those folks showed up tonight, I, I believe that they'll have most of their comments regarding traffic. That seemed to be the primary concern of that meeting. But I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. So will other members of the staff. And at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Green. Good evening, uh, Chairman Lamb, members of the Planning Commission. I'm Matt Taylor of SEC here in town. I'm accompanied by Mr. Rob Moshan, uh, landscape architect and planner from my office as well as the applicants Nick and Gary Wisniewski uh, from Landmark Homes. Uh, we're here tonight to uh, introduce to you the Tuscany project. So if we could put the PowerPoint up on the screen, we'll get started. We're just waiting on the cable department to do that. It's the wrong computer. There you go. <clears throat> so uh, Tuscany is, uh, as Ms. Green said, a proposed plan residential development to be located along West Thompson Lane. Um, she did a very good job of uh, orienting, orienting you to the vicinity. Uh, we've got a subdivision to the south, a uh, church to the south, a uh, church-like structure to the west, and single-family structures on the east. Um, currently there's an existing house and several outbuildings on the property along with a lot of uh, vegetation, mature trees um, on the site and around the perimeter. Um, we are proposing to construct um, 34 single-family detached homes um, on the 6.8 acres that we have here. That gives a, a density of 5.0 dwelling units per acre. Um, our target market here is for the empty nester in the 55-plus uh, time frame or age range. It will not be a it will not be deed restricted, but that is the target market. Um, these will be single family homes. They won't be apartments. They won't be townhouses. They'll all be for sale. Uh, we anticipate a mixture of one and two story homes here, and are trying to create a level of exclusivity through the gated entry feature here. Uh, another item of note will be that Landmark Homes will be the developer and the only builder um, in here. So they'll be in control of all of aspects of the development. Uh, as Ms. Green said, it will be fee simple ownership. They, it will be, the ownership will be much like a townhouse in that they'll only own the footprint and inside those walls. They'll have some limited common ownership in the driveways, porches, patio areas. Everything else will be common ownership. Everybody here will be mandatory that they be members of the HOA. That HOA will be managed by a third party independent association management company um, like just about all of our subdivisions now um, all of our utilities will be underground here and we anticipate those and the roads to all be constructed in a single phase um, 
as far as timing, we anticipate if zoning goes well uh, with no delays, we would anticipate construction starting in the spring of 2015, which would allow homes to be the first home to be constructed in late summer, early fall of 2015. And we'd anticipate a uh, build out time of uh, approximately three years on the homes themselves. Uh, they will be private roads. Um, the roads will look very much like our public roads, same pavement width. The curb may vary, the curb type may vary a little bit. Uh, you'll also see sidewalks behind the curb almost on all the streets. Uh, we did take uh, some design liberties and remove along the detention pond on the east side, but uh, other than that, they'll be along all of our streets, I believe. And then we've also planned some visitor parking around the site on the north, south, and in the central part next to our uh, structured amenity area. And as Ms. Green said, uh, TDOT is currently looking at widening this road. The applicant is, understands that and um, is in anticipation of dedicating any right-of-way that may be needed. So whenever we, uh, if we get to the construction plan stage, then we would dedicate that right-of-way then if it is needed. Uh, the homes themselves be a mixture of one and two story. As I said, we're targeting that 55 plus range. So we anticipate all the livable area being on the first floor and that second floor being used for some long-term storage where they may not need to access items on a regular basis or for the occasional visitor, whether that's grandkids, children, friends that come over for the evening um, or stay for a weekend. Um, these homes will start at 1,800 square feet as a minimum and go up to over 3,000 square feet in side, size. All of our yards will be sodded. That includes front, side, and rears. Um, that's a little different than uh, some of the subdivisions we see. Here you'll see a, an example of the type home that we want to build. You'll see that it's very architecturally pleasing to the eye. It's got a lot of roof line variation. Uh, the garage doors have been upgraded. You've got dormers and a lot of quality materials on this facade here. Um, with that pleasing architecture, we wanted to bring that close to the street so the architecture can be seen. So we've requested very shallow front setbacks, 13 feet off the back of the sidewalk to the face of the building. And then to accommodate a car in the, in the driveway, we are going to re recess the face of that garage from the face of the house at least seven feet. That will allow at least a 20-foot space between the back of the sidewalk and the garage. And then our other setbacks will have 10 feet of separation between any of the dwelling units. Um, our materials will consist of brick, cement board siding, and stone. All quality materials that will last a long time and uh, make it a very pleasing development for years to come. Um, the amenities. Um, we are proposed, the most structured amenity is a pool and clubhouse. Clubhouse is, uh, uh, the architecture will complement the houses as well as the materials. The inside will be of high quality materials as well. The pool itself is uh, fairly small in nature and only four, four feet deep. That's on purpose. Um, our target market here is not looking for a recreation point, they're looking for an exercise space. In addition to the pool and clubhouse, the patio um, will have a grilling area really to create a uh, nice gathering spot for the residents of the neighborhood. In addition to the pool and clubhouse, the rest of the amenities really try to set the tone for the development. Um, stone and wood signage as you come in, gated entry, uh, columns along uh, Thompson Lane along with evergreen material between those create that faux fence effect and cohesive signage or uh, mailboxes and yard lights throughout the development. And lastly, as Ms. Green said, we did host a neighborhood meeting in late October. Um, we presented just much like we did tonight. We had about 30 participants at that meeting. After presenting, we opened it up for questions. Uh, the biggest thing that we heard that night was traffic. Not so much about the traffic we're going to generate, but the existing traffic on Thompson Lane and the issues that creates for them. Um, so since that time, we conducted a traffic study and uh, analyzed that, and the applicant is committed to building a left turn lane into Tuscany. Whenever we build our roads, we'll build a left turn lane into our development uh, to try to alleviate those concerns. And the other concerns we 
our neighbor to the east was concerned about the viability of his water well after the fact. Um, that's something that will be monitored during construction. Our blaster will have to do a pre-blast survey, have insurance, be licensed through the state. And then we heard some concerns of drainage on the south side of Thompson Lane. There are existing problems now. Uh, we certainly will not exacerbate those issues. Uh, we may not be able to solve their entire problem, but uh, we'll do that thorough design at the construction plan stage. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions, as well as any other members of the design team are here, if you'd like to have any. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Taylor? I have one, and it's more of a curiosity question than it is a planning question. What's the thought process, since they are detached dwellings, of making them fee simple? I mean, is that... I'm just curious. As it's, it, it's really a marketing uh, so that they can go in there and maintain. Uh, the HOA will maintain the yards for them, maintain the exterior of the homes. Uh, so it's really a marketing, I don't want to say ploy, but a marketing strategy. Okay. Interesting. It's, it's like older people like me. Well, I mean, I get it from a condo or townhouse standpoint, but since the, anyway, you explained it. No, no, no. But the same for older people like you and me. <laughs> Councilman Smotherman. Mr. Taylor, if you would explain to me uh, on a two-lane road how you add a left turn a lane uh, without widening the road, or will the right road we, actually be widened? We will widen the road. Um, there's a fairly significant right-of-way there already. I think it's about 100, 110 feet. And so um, we'll push everything out approximately six feet on each side. So there will be... Uh, there are a couple of other uh, turn lanes on Thompson Lane. There's one going into Prim Springs, which is to the south and west of this development, and then there's one directly to the east that goes into, I think it goes into a neighborhood just before Siegel Road or directly across from Siegel Road. Do you have any idea how many linear feet we're talking on? The uh, I would say the overall length, I'd say we're going to have about 300 feet of taper, probably uh, 60 to 80 feet of storage. And then you have another 300 feet of taper on the other side. So you're talking, you know, six to 700 feet of road work right there. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, we talked uh, about the number of guest parking spots that you had when yes. we came before the uh, previous meeting. Have you looked at that? Is there any way to add any additional guest parking places? We. Uh, we did look at it. Uh, we don't have. We couldn't find any additional room for additional spaces. Um, we looked along the western or the eastern detention pond, and um, we feel like we're going to need every bit of the stormwater area that we show there. And um, you know, between the garage spaces and the driveway spaces and the visitor spaces, uh, we felt like we were providing a um, an adequate number of spaces overall across the entire site. Any other questions before we open the public hearing? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Ask anybody to come forward to the microphone that would like to speak. Anybody at all? I guess you guys did a good job in your neighborhood meeting. There were over 30 residents there, so I'm a little surprised. But. Very good. Seeing no one coming forward, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Young. Move approval subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Item C is a zoning application for approximately 0.55 acres to be rezoned from PUD to CBD at 315 West Main Street. Mr. John Morris is the applicant. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Jones. Uh, I will abstain from any discussion or vote on this issue. Okay. Thank you. Am I Ms. Green. Up? Okay. You are, you are up. Yes, ma'am. Our third public hearing this evening is for you to consider property that's currently zoned C or PUD Plan Unit District, located at 315 West Main Street. That property is located on the corner of West Main Street and North Front Street. You can see it identified in the purple color, which and it's shaped like a square on the map before you. 
This property was the formerly the location of a furniture store that experienced structural fa failure and was subsequently demolished. The property was then rezoned in 2008 from its, its previous zone of Central Business District, CBD, to PUD to allow the development of the property, and you may remember this, it was a six-story structure with 46 dwelling units, retail space along West Main Street, and a three-level parking garage for tenants and customers. That was in early 2008, just before we had a change in our economy, um, which subsequently led the uh, previous proposed development to not be um, sought after. So that uh, plan development has remained um, just dormant for this many years, and now there is the new owner, Mr. John Morris, who's requesting that you change the zone back to what it was zoned before it was zoned PUD. So it was zoned CBD, and that's Central Business District, and that zone, of course, applies to just our city core, and it allows a different type of development, what we see in our city core. It doesn't require off-street parking, basically a parking lot, and those buildings can go right up to the street. That's our uh, part of our history, and, and this zone district is something that allows that and protects that. Um, it was owned PUD, and now they're asking to go back to CBD. The new owner has no interest in the development as it was entitled in the program book and has therefore made this application to zone the property back to CBD. The uh, Planning Commission, you guys should conduct a public hearing prior to discussing the application and making your recommendation to City Council. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them either before or after the public hearing. Is there a representative of, of the applicant here that would like to speak for um, the public? Clyde Roundtree is representing the applicant. Clyde, would you like to come to the lectern? No. He would. He would. <laughs> Commissioner Lamb, fellow commissioners, thank you, uh, Robert Ann. As far as adding new information, there's not, not a lot of new information. Mr. Morris doesn't exactly have a user right now um, that wants to develop the property. He wants to position himself to go ahead and allow it to be <coughs> useful for uh, development in the commercial in the in the overlay district there. And um, so I'm just here if you have any questions specifically, but there's really not a lot of specific information related to that piece of property right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Appreciate it, Clyde. Okay, I'll open the public hearing, ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. We're batting a 1,000 tonight. <laughs> Nobody? Okay, now close the public hearing. Discussion by the Planning Commission? Move for approval, subject to all staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. One abstention. One abstention. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Item D is the annexation petition for approximately 0 0.72 acres along Rack Court Investment Partners. This is applicant, Ms. Green. Thank you, sir. Our next public hearing is for you to consider adopting a plan of services written by the staff and the annexation of approximately 0 0.72 acres. This property did have a petition presented to planning staff and planning commission requesting the annexation of this property. The property is shown on the map before you in the color shaded orange, and it is, uh, has frontage along Rack Court. The property looks like it's an independent parcel that's currently located in the unincorporated area of Rutherford County. However, this parcel is actually a part of a larger tract. Um, so the orange portion of property is just a small portion of this larger tract that has um, frontage along John Rice Boulevard. The yellow color on the map represents the existing city limits. The white color is the unincorporated area of Rutherford County, and again, the orange area is the area which a petition for annexation has been submitted to staff. The property is a part of that larger parcel that I mentioned that fronts along John R. Rice Boulevard and through the middle of what the city constructed for the realignment of John Rice in 2010 and 2011. This larger portion of the tract is already inside the city, and it's already zoned CH and Gateway Design Overlay District. The applicants are in the process of marketing that property, and any prospective purchaser would desire for the entire property to be located in the city limit, rather than requiring them to work with two jurisdictions, the city of Murfreesboro and then the county for that small portion that's not in the city. They would like to have the entire property all in one jurisdiction, the city of Murfreesboro. Also the city, and there's a subsequent zoning change request that will come along with this, which will be to change the property to um, a similar zone, which would allow the similar commercial use and would 
add it to our gateway design overlay district, which, as you know, has a um, higher degree of scrutiny when we review plans and higher standards in our community. The property is unusual in that it appears to be a separate lot, as I mentioned, in the Deerfield subdivision. However, however it's not. When the larger tract was annexed in 2001, this area was not included in the annexation um, at that time for many reasons, I think most significantly because the residents along Rat Court were afraid that if this property were annexed, then there would be uh, commercial traffic through their residential subdivision, so through Doe Drive and Rat Court to get to this property. So it was left out of that annexation. Um, this is moving forward with the full expectation, and the applicants know that there will be no commercial traffic allowed on, John, on Rack Court. The commercial traffic will have to come from John R. Rice Boulevard uh, with the majority of the property fronts, and that there can be no commercial traffic on the property, and I believe that they can speak to that as well. This property is located within the city's urban growth boundary. It's contiguous with the city limits along its northwestern property line, which is the remainder of the property. You've been provided with a plan of services, which outlines the services we can provide and a time frame for when we can provide them. The full complement of city services will be available to this property upon annexation becoming effective. It is an uh, undeveloped property, so the de when the property is developed is when many of the services will be extended to the property, such as sewer. The, um, there is also an aerial photo that I wanted to show you that shows the property, um, and it shows that what the property looked like before the city built John R. Rice, rebuilt John R. Rice Boulevard in 2010, 2011. So you can see that we've shown the location of John Rice, but you can see what the property looked like before, and that kind of gives you an idea of what it looked like several years ago. There has been somewhat of a change in this area. The parcel before did not have frontage on that uh, major uh, road that it does now. The Planning Commission should hold a public hearing prior to making your decision regarding this annexation petition request. If any questions, I'll be glad to answer them uh, before after the public hearing. Okay. This first public hearing is strictly for the um, application for annexation. It is. So we need to keep that in mind as we conduct our discussion on it. Then the next public hearing, if this is approved, would be for uh, the zoning change. So that being said, I'll open the public hearing, ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. My name is Joan O'Shields. I reside at 776 Rack Court. My property is adjacent to the property you were talking about. If you remember, Mr. Lamb, many years ago, I stood here before you, and so did a lot of the community. Um, this CH zoning that y'all want to do, y'all promised us the last time when we agreed that the annexation and the city could have that ten and a half acres I believe it was ten acres but you would leave the acre and a half alone from these homes in this community where we have raised our children and our children are raising their children you're asking us to allow y'all to put a highway through that area and I know if this goes through it's going to eventually open up Rack Court. There, that is the only way that we can keep the, the, the cul-de-sac, the family union that we have on that street, closed. You know, you're asking to put a highway through there. I'm sure they want to redo John Rice and, and put it through that way. But then you're, you're talking about a highway being right next to children outside playing. I think that's a little too close. You know, we took it upon this council last time that we wouldn't be coming here again. There's the acre and a half that that property you're saying is part of the other property. That's where that old antebellum home used to sit until he tore it down in the middle of the night so he could sell it for commercial purposes. You know, I can't see, we're trying to keep ourselves away from all the city parts of it. That's why we all bought and built our houses out there. And it's just growing, and, and there's other places to put things. You've put two, not one, but two 
automobile dealerships out there. When there's nothing out there but communities. It's just unbelievable the way that y'all were trying to bring all this construction upon us, us people that just want to live in a community. And I don't think it's fair or right. We were promised last time we wouldn't be going through this, that that acre and a half where that house sat would stay residential and in the county. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. O'Shields. Anybody else? Chairman, Commissioners, I'm Jeff Reed. I'm here representing the, the applicant tonight in regards to this annexation request, also in the zoning request that you have next on your agenda. Um, just to, for clarity's sake, there are no plans to put a highway on this parcel, as has been, I think, I think correctly explained uh, to this panel. This 0.72 acre parcel is a part of the 6.8 uh, acres that's already currently existing. So currently, with the 6.8 acre parcel that we have, it's under two different jurisdictions, the county and the city both. And to integrate, the, and we don't have a current user for the property, we don't have a, a, a distinct use for it that's yet been identified, but for the purpose of going forward with a incorporated site plan that would incorporate basically the entire site, which would include the 0.72 acres and this, into the 6.8 acres, we are requesting annexation um, by the city to allow that to happen, to have one jurisdiction to oversee whatever ultimately is developed on the property. So it made sense to do that. So it's really a, to get things straight with this parcel as a whole that we're before you tonight so we can go forward with um, trying to present the parcel for marketing purposes to potential users. Now, uh, there are, there's no intention to access RAC Court at all. And my clients are willing to put in restrictions that would prohibit them from accessing RAC Court from this parcel. Uh, the intention with respect to this 0.72 acre parcel is to keep it largely um, used for buffer and detention area and allows us to move some of those areas that would all, uh, for detention and buffer that would otherwise be on the six acre portion of the site over to this 0.72 acre site. So we would expect to have a very extensive and heavy buffer uh, that we could build on this 0.72 acres to, to separate us uh, from the residential uh, neighbors that we have. So uh, to m just make it clear, there's no intention to access Rack Court at all. There'd be no request to access Rack Court. There would be no entrance ways on a rack court. This 0.72 acres purely would be brought into the 6.8 acres as a one unit, which would be collectively annexed into the city as one parcel, uh, which would allow the city to have full jurisdiction over whatever ultimate site plan is proposed for that site for the 6.8 acres. So that's what we're requesting um, you to consider today. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Anybody else like to speak? Anybody? Okay. I'll close the public hearing. I have no comment. Mr. Reed, you may have to come back up for some questions to answer. No, I, th th this is concern, concerning the buffering. Ms. Green, along the edge of the where the anywhere where a commercial highway zone meets a residential zone, that's our most intense buffer. It's not our most intense. Our yeah. most is between industrial and residential, but it is our second most, okay. I guess you could say. Would you describe that a little sure. bit? Sure. So we would require a minimum of a 12-foot wide landscape buffer that would be planted with at least two rows of evergreen material at different heights to make sure that it would screen any potential vehicle uh, trap or vehicle lights from the lights from vehicles or any other type of noises. We also, um, when we look at the site, we see if there are any other special considerations that we may need them to add some additional type of buffering for the property. Okay, thank you. Ms. Green, what type of, would there be any prohibitions on the type of fence that could be erected there? I was just, you know, with houses uh, surrounding this parcel, you know, a. Um, 10 foot high chain link fence of barbed wire on top of it wouldn't look too good, you sure. know. So, so our zoning ordinance um, for most zone districts 
doesn't speak to fences. If the property is zoned CH and GDO, our GDO standards do not allow the type of fence you just described. A chain link fence is not permitted if it's visible from any public right of way. If it's um, interior to site, we have an apartment community that has a dog park interior to the site and you can't see it from any uh, right of way, they can have a, a code chain link fence there but they can't use it in the gateway design overlay district. So that would apply if this property were zoned GDO. Um, in its current state, they could use any type of fence they'd like. Okay. One more question. Yes, sir. Ms. Green, is there anything that would prohibit this from uh, access into RAC court? Well, I think we've got a commitment from the applicants that they're going to add a restriction saying that they will not be access to RAC court. If it's in the city of Murfreesboro, um, you have your staff who are here and listening to this and will, um, when we review the plans, not allow that connection as well. But I think Mr. Reed offered to add that restriction to the property, which will be something that they're doing voluntarily and will be an extra step. So they're voluntarily saying that we will not use RAC court as a Yeah, I think they heard our concerns. By That's the, right. by the city. Um, so it's enforceable by the residents and also the city as a separate we'll matter, monitor. not with the restricted covenants, yes. but a separate matter would not allow the access. Rat court would be considered a substandard street. It doesn't meet our commercial street sections, and we wouldn't want to add or encourage any traffic to go on a, commercial, a substandard residential street for commercial traffic. That all being said, though, we couldn't make that requirement unless it was annexed in the city. We don't have jurisdiction over Correct. the area that's not annexed. And there, there's no highway, and I know Mr. Reed spoke to this, but just because I represent the city, there will be no highway going through this property and no highway that connects to Rack Court. I'm not sure um, where maybe that information came from, but just rest assured there's no highway that will be going through the property. Okay. Mr. Smotherland. Ms. Green, from a topography standpoint, and, and I'm not looking for exact feet above sea level or anything, but how does this particular point seven two acres sit according to the 6.8 acres that it adjoins. Is is this a, a lower point or a higher point? And, and it, would this be more conducive to a retention area for a retention pond or something like that? Or is it the highest point on this piece of property if they were joined? Sure. Um, I <coughs> pulled up the one of the pages from the plan of services. It's page 10 that shows the drainage for the property. Let me just take a look at that for a second. So the, the study area basically dra drains eastward to a closed depression that pe appears to be on the subject area. So it looks like with the existing topography of the site, the low area is in this area that's can being considered to be annexed. This is information that we had our city engineer look at and the assistant city for environmental engineer, Mr. Sam Huddleston. And when he looked at the property, he saw that there was that closed depression, which is mostly on this property. You can see the extent of the closed depression extends onto the adjacent properties as well. So upon development, the closed depression and impacts of adjacent properties associated with the closed depression will be considered. So we'll look at that, and we won't allow them just to throw water onto the neighbors because the depression does extend along the, um, beyond the boundary to, along the adjacent property. And probably if um, Mrs. O'Shields lives next door, she's familiar with the topography of the area. And so we'll look at that, and we've already kind of are on notice that that is a low point on the property. And so it would make sense to have it be the stormwater feature as well. All right. And, and that would actually increase the uh, – Joseph taught me many – or a couple of years ago that the best buffer you can possibly have is distance. And, and that water area there, that retention pond, would certainly add distance of any project that would be constructed on this property once it were developed. Is that correct? That's well stated. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. I'll make the last two. Right. Straight lot, do you have anything? I think that Ms. O'Shields was a little mistaken. To my knowledge, there has never been a structure on this particular part of the uh, property. There was an aerial photograph that was included in your materials from 2004 that showed the old house on the other part of the property, but not on this portion of the property. This has always been a area that uh, was just sort of extra, and it dates back to the development of the Deerfield subdivision. I was just reading the comments about in 2001 about potential usage for commercial purposes, so bear with me.
Okay. Any other comments? Easy, Bob. There's no other questions or comments. We're ready for a motion. This is pertaining to the annexation only. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the annexation petition request. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. Move on to item E, the zoning application for the same property, approximately 0.72 acres along Rack Court, to be zoned commercial highway and GDO1, simultaneous with annexation investment partners as the applicant. Ms. Green. Thank you, sir. Um, this next public hearing is uh, related to the previous public hearing as it considers the property, which you just considered the petition for annexation. The property is approximately 0.72 acres, and it's located along Rack Court. And the property is currently zoned R15 in Rutherford County, and that's for residential and agricultural purposes in the county. You can see that it's contiguous to the current city limits along its northwestern property line, and that is the parcel that is a portion of. So th there's a larger parcel which has frontage on John Rice Boulevard, and that would be the uh, remaining property that this is actually a, a continuation of. The property is currently zoned R15, so to change the zone, there needs to be an application made simultaneous with its annexation, and that has been made by the applicants who are investment partners who are here in the audience as well. They um, have requested that you consider zoning this property CH simultaneous with this annexation. That CH zone is the same zone district that is what the majority of the property is zoned. Also, the request is to include this in the gateway design overlay district, specifically the GDO1 district. So this would have a base zone of CH and the overlay of GDO1. The planning staff have endeavored to advise the applicants why the property was not annexed and zoned for commercial purposes in 2001, 2002, when the former owner made that application. Um, the applicants would like to move forward with this request, ask you to consider changing the zoning to CH and GDO, and um, they believe that the city's site plan review and GDO requirements will assure the adjoining property owners that the adjoining properties will be appropriately screened and buffered from development. They have also, in the previous public hearing, the attorney for the applicants have uh, voluntarily committed to adding a restrictive covenant that would not allow access to rec court. I've mentioned with the annexation <coughs> as well that we will not, uh, the city staff will not uh, allow the, or recommend that you don't allow the um, commercial traffic to travel through Doe Drive and rack court, so that would be something that we will restrict as well. So this public hearing will be to consider the zoning of the property, the zoning of it, CH and GDO1 simultaneous with this annexation. The previous public hearing was, of course, to consider the annexation. So just to make it, I think, a, just a little bit more clear, this next public hearing is to consider the zoning change. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. I don't know um, if, Mr. Reed, do you want to give a presentation before the public hearing as a representative of the applicant? I, I think we've told everyone everything they need to know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Otherwise, you should conduct a public hearing. Thank you. Before the public hearing, does the Planning Commission members have any questions? Okay. I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come back to the microphone that would like to speak. I would like to ask, why do they want it zone CH if they're not planning on using it for the highway? And what is the uh, GOB, whatever it is? It's, it never stated in the paper whenever you all mailed out the publications to us. All it had was the CH, the GDO-1. Okay. Anything else, Ms. O'Shields? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Y'all don't keep your word. Would anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Mr. Adelot, can you address her questions, please? Well, I'm going to try to. First of all, commercial highway is the name of the zoning classification, and it does not necessarily mean that there will be a highway. It does not require a highway to be constructed. It's the zoning classification. It's the same kind of zone that's out there in that area already. So it does not mean that there will be a highway. So, and that may be something that may be um, confusing you. GDO1 means Gateway Design Overlay District. That's an aesthetic overlay district that we adopted that's uh, typical of the area around the hospital, around the... Uh, <coughs> Fortress Boulevard over uh, at the intersection with um, John Rice and Manson Pike, the avenues, all that is in the gateway overlay. It's a uh, district that requires a higher 
development standard, we have greater setbacks, we have greater buffering requirements, we pay more attention to the architecture, we require more masonry. Uh, it requires two submittals for site plan review and aesthetic review rather than just one. So it requires more time for the Planning Commission to review plans. It also set, requires that the staff spend more time with the applicants, help them to prepare their plans. Uh, developments like this will receive a higher degree of scrutiny than would be the case in areas that are not inside the GDO. There will not be another public hearing, but there will be uh, public meetings where these will be discussed. So that's what the GDO means. So when you see the GDO and the commercial highway, that's what we're talking about uh, on that. And to my knowledge, it was correctly advertised in both the uh, newspaper and what we sent out. Uh, if we failed to, I'd sure like to see it. Uh, but uh, I think that answers the question as best as I know. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Adelaide. Any questions from members of the Planning Commission? There are no questions. We're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to approve subject to all staff comments. Second motion. Motion. motion is made and seconded. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. We'll move on to uh, item F, proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance regarding parking requirements for commercial centers. Planning staff is applicant, Mr. Adelot. Yes, sir. We have now had some experience with the uh, parking requirements for commercial centers that we adopted uh, several uh, years ago. We, are, as staff, are re recommending that there be four changes made. These changes include uh, the change in the definition for a commercial center to increase the gross floor area allowed as restaurant uses from 25% to 35%. Change in the definition for a neighborhood shopping center to increase the gross floor area as restaurant uses from 25% to 30%. Change in the minimum park requirement for a commercial center from one space for each 200 square feet of floor area to one space for each 250 square feet of floor area. And change in the minimum park required for a neighborhood shopping center from one space for each 200 square feet of floor area to one space for each 275 feet of floor area. Additionally, along with this, we're uh, recommending a change that has to do with um, the uh, standards in the um, commercial fringe district. Uh, we are recommending that the same distance requirement separations for drive-up windows, dumpsters, gasoline sales uh, from that currently exist for property that is zoned RS or RD also apply to property that is zoned RZ, PRD, or PUD. Uh, those are the amendments we're recommending. Uh, during the uh, daytime meeting, we went into a little bit of elaboration of the justification. I'll be glad to discuss that with you if you'd like. But these are the amendments that are before you tonight. Staff uh, feels that these are appropriate, and we would recommend their approval. I'll be glad to answer your questions. You need to conduct a public hearing uh, and then uh, prepare a recommendation to council. Okay. Any questions from the Planning Commission? If not, I'll open the public hearing. I ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Seeing no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. If there's no questions or comments from the Planning Commission members, we're ready for a motion. I'll move for approval. Subject staff comments. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. Final public hearing this evening is a proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance regarding uses permitted lot and yard requirements <laughs> and land intensity ratios, the planning staff is the applicant, Mr. Adelon. Uh, yes, sir. Chart 1 and Chart 2 are the very heart of the uh, zone ordinance in terms of its day-to-day -day administration. Chart 1 deals with uses that are permitted in the city, and it lists the uses permitted with a chart with uh, the zoning districts. Uh, that chart has numerous footnotes that offers qualifications to it. Also, if the use is identified with an X where the... Uh, rows and columns intersect, that means it's a use permitted by right. If it's identified with an S, that means it requires a special use permit. However, if it is blank, we know, and from experience, and this was our intention, that there, that, that use not be allowed in those districts. However, the zone owners does not explicitly say that. So one of the amendments we want to do is to change chart one 
so that all of the footnotes are now placed into a separate chapter. And uh, the footnotes that no longer are footnotes in the uh, zone ordinance, they become paragraphs in that chapter. And it is clear that a blank is intended to be a use not allowed. Chart 2 is a very uh, uh, frequently used chart in zone ordinance. It deals with the uh, land intensity uh, ratios, minimum lot size, etc. It also has numerous footnotes that qualify different uh, provisions. Again, we want to take the footnotes out of the chart and put them in a separate chapter that will work in tandem with the chart. It's intended that this will be clear to people looking to use our zone ordinance because rather than searching for an important provision in a, and finding it in a footnote, they will now find it in a chapter of the zone ordinance where it belongs. This is a, a recommendation that staff is making. Frankly, we could um, do without these amendments, but it's something that I feel is, uh, will help the usability, it will improve uh, its functionality, and it will make it more clear to the people who do business with the city. And I would recommend its approval. We need to conduct a public hearing. We, then we need to prepare a recommendation for council. Thank you, Mr. Adelot. Any questions? If there's no questions, I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Seeing no one, no one come forward, I'll close the public hearing. If there are no further questions or comments, we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for uh, approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion carries. That concludes the public hearings portion of our agenda tonight. We'll move on to staff reports and other business. Mr. Adelot. Uh, Chairman Lamb, I have no staff reports. Shocking. I have nothing. Okay. Mr. Blomley? Uh, Ms. Green? No, sir. Mr. McGavis? Okay. If there's no further business, we stand adjourned. <laughs>